Welcome everyone to this video about NFTs and the ERC721 token standard. There's no doubt that NFTs has been on everyone's mind and in the news and everywhere during this year. So today I thought I would explain sort of where all of this started, what the ERC721 NFT token standard is, and um, what the difference is between that token, the ERC20 token that I talked about in my last video, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, some other NFT standards that exist out there and the differences. Okay, I hope you will enjoy that. Uh, if you do, make sure to already now subscribe to the channel, hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content so that we know. Um, and uh, don't forget to check out Morales if you're interested in building dApps in a rapid way, uh, then check out Morales. We have a nice hackathon going at the moment. But with that said, we're going to get into the topic straight away. In the last video, as I said, we talked about the ERC20 token standard, which is sort of, yeah, it's the first token standard, at least that I know of, that came out on Ethereum. Um, and it's very good, it's still used today, and it is very good at handling use cases of fungible tokens, meaning, for example, money, meaning uh, things like reward points, whatever, whatever it might be. And with fungible tokens, or fungibility in general, we mean uh, tokens that are similar. Every you know, set of tokens are the same, just like a dollar bill is the same. If you don't care which dollar bill you have. If you, I have one dollar bill, you have one dollar bill. If we exchange them, we don't really care. It's the same value. A dollar just tells you that you have a dollar. Uh, but if you have, for example, a deed for a house, that would tell you that you, know, you don't want to just switch the deeds with someone else to your house because that's actually unique. It proves ownership to a specific asset. And that's what we call non-fungible assets, right? Or a non-fungible token. That would be a deed. And it just means that it's not replaceable with another copy of the same type of asset. It is unique for one specific asset. Uh, and NFTs can be used for a bunch of different things. When they created this token standard for Ethereum, uh, they talked about that uh, use cases can be uh, both you know, digital and physical ownership, which we've seen so far. You know, you can own land in the central land. You can own kitties in crypto kitties. Uh, you can own digital art. Uh, but you can also have projects like uh, Ubiquity, for example. They do uh, NFTs that represent house deeds, as we talked about before. You could have real art that is tokenized and, and uh, traded on the blockchain. Um, and uh, you could also do things like, uh, you know, concert seats. That's, you know, one ticket is not directly replaceable by another ticket. It's not the same. You have different seats. Uh, so you can use NFTs for that, in theory. Then how you do all of that practically, that's a different question. But that's where you need another token standard. Because in an ERC20 token, there are no differences between the tokens. In the contract, if you have a look at it, you will see that it's just a matter of balances for specific addresses. So your balance holds x amount of tokens and that's all that the contract holds uh, so i hold 10 tokens you hold 100,000 tokens someone else holds 50 tokens and um, that's all that it keeps track of so you wouldn't be able to tie that into some sort of useful uniqueness like you would with an nft so that's why they introduced this first nft token standard which was the uh, it came about in eip 721 and i can show you the proposal here. Here it is. So as I talked about in the ERC20 video, uh, the EIP721, it means that it was the 721st issue submitted to the Ethereum repository. Um, and uh, here we are in just the EIP repository. So here they have summarized all of the EIPs that have been um, implemented. Uh, but here we can read the abstract of this suggestion because this was an improvement proposal to Ethereum. The following standard allows for the implementation of sta a standard API for NFTs within smart contracts. This standard provides basic functionality to track and transfer NFTs. We consider use cases of NFTs being owned and transacted by individuals as well as consignment to third parties, blah, 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 blah. NFTs can represent ownership of digital or physical assets, uh, physical property, houses, unique artwork, virtual collectibles, which we've seen a lot about this year, unique pictures of kittens, collectible cards, uh, negative value assets, loans, burdens, and other responsibilities. And we've seen this a little bit with the bonds uh, in, uh, you know, with NFTs. Uh, and then they lay out the specification for this. 
And some of this is similar, like you would have in an ERC20 contract, like balance off. Uh, and uh, well, you don't have owner off and you know the transfer function. Um, but there are also some new stuff, like I said here, uh, owner off, because the structure of an ERC721 contract is different because you don't have balances in the same sense, right? I cannot own two NFTs of the same type because each token is different. That's the, you know, that's the way of the contract. So instead, this contract just maps a token ID to an owner. And there can only be one for each token ID. So even if you own, you know, 10 NFTs, they're all different. And you have just the token IDs pointing to an owner, if that makes sense. If you're not a developer, uh, you should learn some solidity and then you can check out an ERC721 contract uh, because it's very interesting. And, you know, we have great courses in the Ivan Tech Academy um, and we have a lot of solidity tutorials on this channel as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, but so this led to NFTs becoming more and more popular. And finally, we could standardize them just like we did with ERC20 tokens. Because as I said in that video, it's important in order for a network to grow to have a standard that everyone uses, just like the plugs in your house are all the same so that you can have interoperability. Um, and that is what ERC721 did as well. A common misconception, however, with these tokens that is important for you to know if you have you know, any... Um, aspirations of creating a token like this or just understanding the space investing in this space mm -hmm. is that the actual token itself in the smart contract does not hold any you know data such as images or text necessarily it can hold some text if you want but generally when you have a piece of art for example um, that image if you're talking about digital art which has become big now that picture is not actually on the blockchain okay it just is an ID that is then in one way associated with that picture. So that picture is hosted somewhere else because we can't really have pictures on the blockchain. It takes up way too much space. So all that it says is that the NFT has an ID, you're the owner of that ID, and then there is some metadata in that token. And that metadata can contain things like links to external resources, which could be an image. So it can contain a link to an image, but that image is hosted somewhere else. And it can contain, you know, a hash of an image, for example, or it can contain properties that will be used inside the game if it's a game NFT. And those all point to resources outside the blockchain. In, in, in many cases, you can have like text and numbers in the actual tokens, but you can't have things like images. So then you have to point to external resources. But the point of the NFT is to record the ownership on chain, just like, you know, your deed for your house does not contain your house, but it proves your ownership of the house that it says on the deed, right? And it's similar to this here. And then it's simply a fact that, you know, people have found this to have value. They have speculated in these type of assets going up in price. And who knows where this whole space is going? Um, people call it a bubble. People call it the future of art, of, you know, ownership, whatever. And I don't know where we're going. Uh, but I'm very excited of the amount of innovation that is happening, especially when it comes to making real estate markets more efficient or creating bonds on the blockchain very very interesting stuff um, but that's important to know that you know the nft records ownership of something but it doesn't mean that the image exists inside of the nft for example anyone can download the nft uh, digitally but it doesn't make them necessarily the owner right that's the point of nfts another thing that can be good to know about the erc721 token standard is the fact that there has been a standard after this that is sort of competing with this 721 standard, and that is the ERC-1155 token standard. And uh, I can mention shortly what the differences are, but maybe I will make a separate video on the 1155 token standard as well. But what the problem with the ERC-721 is that each contract is for one specific type of NFTs. Let's say you have concert tickets right so you have one concert and for that concert you would deploy a new ERC721 token contract and in that contract uh, you would have all of the different seat IDs mapped to the buyers of the seats in that case but if you have many 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 concerts that means that you would have many different um, smart contracts right and that can be inefficient especially when you want to create a new NFT you, want to, you need to create a new contract. And that was solved with the 1155 token contract. There you can have 
multiple types of NFTs within the same contract, and you can add more NFTs later on. Uh, so you, you don't have to decide when you deploy the contract exactly which NFT you want it to be. You can add NFTs and one contract can contain you know, hundreds of thousands of NFTs where you can have special IDs and owners for each one of those type of NFTs. So the ERC-1155 is a bit more functional in that sense. It can deal with a much larger set of um, features than an ERC-721 token standard. The drawback with that is that it becomes more complicated, especially for new programmers. Then I would recommend the 721 token standard. If you're coding something just for fun, you want to see how it works, then I would start with the 721 because it's a bit easier to get a grip of. But 1155 is a bit more functional. So you can check that out if you want. I think I'll make a video specifically about the 1155 token standard in the near future. But I hope you enjoyed this video and there are a ton more videos about NFTs on YouTube. So you can check those out if you're more interested in the use case apart from you know, the technical aspect that I'm talking about here. Um, but uh, if you're interested in learning how to code uh, your own NFT, for example, you can check out a lot of the Solidity tutorials that we have on this channel. If you're interested in building dApps, check out the videos on this channel. We have cloning Etherscan, cloning Zerion, cloning Rarible. We have so many great tutorial series here. Check out Morales.io uh, to learn how to develop dApps faster than ever before. Uh, and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.